when we talk about developing techniques, what I like to do is I like to take all my techniques for each of my defensive positions, and I like to put them on what we call a technique board. It defines exactly what the technique is. What are we trying to teach, and how do we want our kids to know it? And then we create a list, and we develop the drills utilized to teach each technique. So we define what the technique is, and then what we want to do is we want to create a drill that teaches that technique. We define what the coach's teaching points are that are used in that drill, and then we use them at all levels. This creates common teaching from top to bottom. This creates a common language to communicate with our kids. I think that that's very important. If you can create a common language and a common teaching, you have carryover, and as your kids develop through the program, they're more comfortable and they become faster players within the system. So what you're going to do is you're going to see my technique board. It's a little blurred because when we boot it up it goes out. So I'll take you through this. Um, if you look over at the skill on the far left, okay, it says stance. And then over here it says alignment. And over here it says get off. And in this area it defines the technique. And then it talks about the drills that we use for that and what our coaching points are. So if you take a look at stance right now, I'm just going to go over coaching points. Some of the things we, we like to talk about is we like the cobra angle where we have that nice angle. We like to have white fingertips, weight on the fingertips. Um, another term we like to do is eyes on the screen, eyes on the screen. Okay, reach out. Those are coaching points. And what we want to do is we want to define these. We do this for alignment. We do this for get off. We do this for strike. We do this for get off and strike, strike and escape, and spark. These will be the individual techniques that we'll teach our kids. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these down. I'm going to talk about all these. And I'm going to talk about the different fundamentals that we use. So the first section is going to be stance and alignment. Really believe in stance and alignment. We are in a three-point stance. We always play with our inside hand down. In the old days, we used to play gap side arm and leg down, and our kids got confused. So we went a long time ago, this is the early 90s, we went down to the University of Toledo who was running our scheme, and we learned an awful lot from those guys back in the day. And they were playing inside hand down. And man, did it work out in a good way for our kids. We want to have the width of our stance greater than a sprinter stance. In the early 90s, when everybody was a stack 4-3 team, you know, we had a bunch stack where our feet were just about in a sprinter stance with a very, very narrow base. And what we did is we told them to get off. Well, you know, that was great at the college game, but we got, we got the snot trapped out of us. So what we had to do is we widened our feet a little bit, still a narrow base, but not a huge, and we talked to our kids about have your hand in front of your head, tail higher than your head. When we talk about stance, we want to be able to get off and strike. We want to get off and strike. When we talk about our alignments for our athletes, we want to talk about ver vertical alignment and horizontal alignment. When we talk about the vertical alignment, we want to snug the ball. You'll hear me talk all, all the time about, hey, man, let's take the air out of the ball. And as long as your hand is in front of your helmet, you're, you can really snug that ball with that credit card alignment. Because you know when your hand's offside, so the relationship to the tip of the ball. If your head's in front of your hand, you have no clue. So you want to snug the ball, you want your credit card alignment, and you want to take air out of the line of scrimmage or the neutral zone. Our horizontal alignment for our tackles, all right, a one technique is the middle of the inside foot of the guard. A two technique is stripe on stripe. And a three technique is the midline of our body on the outside foot of the guard. What we tell our kids is this. We want to we wanna bisect the guard with the midline or your manhood. Um, split it right down the middle. Split it right down the middle. And here's the key. If their splits are tighter, we're going to play heavier to the man. And if their splits are wide, we are going to shade more to the gap and be a little bit looser. Over here, what you can do is you can see our stance and our alignment. Now, if you can also see, and I'm not exactly sure, 
as I go back here, I want to talk a little bit about our defensive ends. When we talk about our defensive ends, our defensive ends play five and seven techniques. And we play heavy techniques. Our five technique is very similar to a three. As you can see in this diagram and stance and alignment, okay, we will take our stud and we will set the stud to the three-man surface and we will play the willy away. In the old days, we used to be in a wide crash five. Now we play them almost like we do a three technique. When we were playing that wide five, people just turned on us, and it wasn't very good for us. So we would rather be in a position where we can get off and strike. And what we do in the stance and alignment drill is simple. We have a scout team break, we break the defensive pre-snap, and we align with perfect stance, stances with both, both vertical and horizontal alignment. And then as they line up, we check the width of the stance, the hand placement, the angle of the body, the credit card alignment, and our horizontal alignment. And then we break. And then we break. All we're trying to do is to get our kids to line up fast. Do we do this drill every day? No. But we do it an awful lot. One of the things I love to do with this is we'll do the exact same thing. We'll run the exact same drill, but I'll take the tight end, and I'll bring him over, and I will flop him over, or I will trade him. And when we, what happens is we make them line up. They come to the ball. We break our defensive pre-snap. We get in a good stance. We do everything that we did in the previous drill. We get into our original looks. We go through all our checkpoints again. We trade the tight end. So now our stud becomes a will and the will becomes a stud. All right. We have to kick our line the other way. So the left tackle is now in the one technique and the right tackle would now be in the three technique. And what we do is then we go through the checklist again. But what have we done? In one drill, we've had, we've had our tackles change from their inside to their outside alignments, reset themselves in their stance, so we get two stance checks, two horizontal alignment checks, two vertical alignment steps. We make sure our stud, is, who, who our stud more are mirror players for the most part, our stud sometimes has to play a five technique. Now he comes down to our five, and our willy will have to play a seven. He comes to a seven. So both our ends have learned their alignment, both our tackles have learned their alignment, and we also learned on day one how to handle tight end trade. We build it in, it's fast, it's easy, and then we don't get confused. We see it every day. Hey coach. Yes sir. You guys flop your ends? We okay. we play we play our stud we play it two different ways. When we're in the base G defense, we play play our our excuse me, we play our stud to the true tight end. When we play in the four two five, we set our stud and we set him to the field all the time. He's a field player. So we have some, both kids have to know how to play the five technique and the seven. Okay. All right? Now, and yeah, we do flop them in the base defense when we can. Um, if you can identify who the, who the true tight ends are. So what we do is we take our stance, and then we want to teach our kids how to get off the ball. And we want to get off the ball on movement. And, you know, everybody sees these hoop drills. And you know, I love the hoop drill so much. And I like it because, number one, it teaches our kids to lean and bend. And it teaches them get off, teaches them effort. I really like it. So here's what we do. We're going to start with the hoop. Now, you can go out and you can buy a hoop for $150, and that's a good deal. Or you can go up to Home Depot and you can get some of that flexible piping, and you can make your own hoops for like $2.50. I'm all about that because I'm cheap, all right? So what we do is we take our defensive line and we put them in here, and we have a coach who's got a ball on a rope. Once again, on the cheap side, we take an old belt, we put it through the strings of an old football, and that works. You can go buy that one with a stick. You know, you can buy that one with a stick for 100 bucks. I'll put a ball on a belt and be good with it. And what we're going to do is the first thing we do is we get a great alignment. Okay, we got a cone for the ball. We want to snug that. We want to get in there, and we want to give a hard cadence. We want to get a hard cadence, and then we pull the ball, and we want our defensive lineman to get off. You know, for the old days, we went for that big first step. We want to stagger step our first, move on movement, get a great alignment, get off that ball, and run through the line. And we're looking for that hustle and acceleration all the way through. There is not a position. There is not a position on defense where kids with average athletic ability but decent size, okay, can play 
other than the defensive line. And if you get a defensive lineman who can play with great technique, play with pad level low, get off the ball and play with a motor, you got something. You got something. And the hoop drill really shows us. I love this, man. I love the stance, the get off the bend. And, man, show me who finishes because he who finishes wins. All right? And then what we do is we come back to the line strip. And you can use trash cans for this, which I'm sort of leaning to. And we call this ball on the rope drill. Not really that high tech in the name, but what a great drill. Okay? What we're looking for is we set up our cones or our, our trash cans or our line strip. And what we're going to do is we're first going to work on that great alignment. All right? Do I have a great step? Do I step the stagger? Do I move on movement? The coach needs the ball on a rope, okay, and his line strips. They break the huddle. We align perfectly with perfect vertical and horizontal alignment. Be perfect in your alignment. All right? The coach will utilize the hard count and try to draw the defensive line offside. You have to do this, or you know as certain as the day is long that one of those, you know, one of those kids, bless their souls, all right, that first game on third and one is going to get that hard court count, and he's going to be jumping around like a blind dog in a meat house. And I think that really hurts us. You know, that, that five-yard penalty isn't a killer on yards, but, man, it's like a momentum killer, all right? And the coach pulls the rope, and the line moves on movement. They are going to they are going to get off, and what we want them to do is redirect and replace the cone about five yards outside the strip. And what do I want to see? I want to see that great effort where they're getting off and they're finishing to the cones. Kids with high motors play. Hit kids with high motors play. And man, I love this drill. It's simple. It's basic. It's alignment. It's stance. It's get off. It is redirection. What a great drill. What a great drill in football. Love that one. All right, now, get off on the target. This is where is a, is a coach, I think sometimes we overthink it. And what we want our kids to do is we want them to get off the ball. If the target shows to their technique, we want them to strike the target. If the target disappears, we want them to bend. If they get a high hat, we want them to strike the target and press it, all right? So here's basically what we tell our kids. We want to get off and strike the gap side or the technique side four-fifths of the man. We want to strike with our hands. We want our thumbs high. We want our hips back. We want to strike with our hands. If that target shows, we want to strike the target, post the target, and we want to take our hips, and we want to put our hips in the gap. And, fellas, that is so important. Get your hips in the gap. They might have their nose over the top of your nose. You're not reached unless your hips are behind you. Get your hips in the gap. If the target shows, strike the target, hips and gap. Strike the target, hips and gap. If the target disappears, bend. Bend. If it's high hat, that target shows, stri strike it and press it. Here's the drill. Coach, coach gives the offensive line a signal. Fist means reach, an open hand means veer, and a twist means pass set. So the coach is over here. He gives each lineman their signal. We go one at a time. All right? We align with perfect stance, perfect alignment, and the player will move, and they'll execute when, when they react to the movement. Fellas, this is what the game comes down to. We talk about this all the time. All right? We want to attack the target. If the target shows, strike the target, play hips and gap. If the target of the man disappears, bend. It's that simple for defensive line. And if you can get your kids to do that, they can play fast. All right? When they get the hi-hat, they'll press it, they'll press it, and they'll start in their move. Now, strike and get off and, and strike drills. Okay, the first thing I like to do is strike and slant or strike and partner. Fellas, I like to work with a partner. And you know, nowadays, can't go live like we used to back in the old days. So I love those hand shields that are soft. There's a couple different ways you can go with this. There's a couple companies out there who make really nice soft hand shields that you can use your hands on. I don't understand why these companies put out these pads that are hard because we play with our hands on defense. Hell, we hold on offense. 
Okay, that's how we block. All right, we use our hands. So we need something we got to grip with. And what we want to do is, you know, what works great, somewhere in the back of your equipment room, there's these canvas hand shields that, like your son when he was nine, would come out and lay on during practice when your wife made him come to practice. Those are dirty, dingy, grungy, and they're soft. Love those. Okay? And what we do is we want to get off and we want to strike that pad and we want to get off and strike and shoot our hands. Can you use the sled? You can, but it's hard to get your hand placement. I love partner with a soft shield. I love partner with a, a soft shield.